Hi guys, Ryan here and welcome to the workshop. Since there have been quite a few weird uh, replies and answers to my last video about the disc brake time trial bike and the disc wheel for it, uh, I was quite surprised actually that in this day and age people still doubt the benefits of disc brakes. Uh, but I decided to make a reply for that to show you the reasons uh, which maybe aren't that common uh, to go for disc brakes. But for first, let me start with the obvious one, uh, and that's the braking performance uh, in the first place. Now I have to admit, my first drop bar road bike, uh, my Boon Cyclocross bike, uh, which I bought uh, two years ago, that was equipped with SRAM Force 1, uh, the old generation of hydraulic disc brakes from SRAM. And the brakes there weren't amazing, to be honest. Uh, they were okay, but nothing special. But these new ones are night and day better. More power, more modulation. Same for the new Shimano units. And I think the Campagnolo units are on par as well. So yeah, for obvious reasons, these brakes are just better at being brakes. Also, you don't have a thousand euro rim as a wear item, which I think is quite stupid to have. And uh, some of you might say that rim brakes nowadays are really good. And uh, that's definitely the case. I have to agree with that, particularly the direct mount brakes. If you pair it with, for example, an end rim or a head wheel uh, with an aluminum braking surface, then they're really, really damn good. The problem for me here is that the type of bikes I want to ride don't have these kind of brakes. So basically no time trial bike or not at least not of the higher end ones has these direct mount rim brakes. But they have some integrated solution which don't work nearly as good. So in this case these brakes are just a simple better replacement. Uh, so that's the first thing, uh, the brake performance. Second thing. Mm, attached to the disc brake is an actual complete bike and yes I have to agree that the first disc brake bikes weren't that good uh, simply because they were just rim brake bikes or frames a bit uh, redesigned to accept disc brakes which is not ideal mm, but if you design a bike to be disc brake specific from the ground up like the new Wenge, like the new Shield like the new Shield Triathlon version, you have more open possibilities in terms of in terms of frame design, which enables you to make the frame much lighter, more compliant, more aerodynamic. Basically, you have more options, and that's definitely the case uh, because I love my Wenge road bike. It's lighter, just as fast, and definitely more comfortable than my old Madon and also it's the reason because it's a much newer bike it's three years of development that has uh, gone into that and simply in this day and age if you want a truly modern up-to-date road bike that's the cutting edge of technology it comes with disc brakes so there's no real avoiding that then the third reason for me is simplicity or convenience because basically I have three uh, drop bar road bikes and if one of them uses vastly different components then it's a bit of an annoying thing but if I have all of these bikes with the same type of drive chain so 12 speed in this case and the same hydraulic brakes disc brakes uh, then I need fewer wheel sets fewer spares brake pads uh, etc it make, just makes my life easier then the next thing is connected to that and it's installation and maintenance now many people will probably not agree with me for saying this but if you look at the facts it, you just can't overlook it uh, when building up a bike particularly when i'm talking about these high-end aero bikes that are integrated then uh, threading a brake hose through a frame is easier than doing it to the cable outer, or at least it's the same. But the problem is, if you have a cable outer, you need to 
thread the inner in it as well. Sometimes it's some tantal bike and particularly bar and front end configurations. It's not so easy, particularly, you know, at the brake levers, it can be a bit awkward to, to even get the inner in the outer. And the problem with these is that eventually, uh, no matter how sealed or good your system is or the frame is, you're going to need to change uh, the inners and eventually the outers as well. And it's going to be on the speed concept it's more than one hour, I think, even if you're quite good at it. Whereas with the brake hose, you route it once, it's buried in a frame, and then you bleed the system and you're good to go. Many people say that, oh, bleeding is, I don't know, something special. No, it's, it's a super simple task and it can be done in 10 minutes. But the hose is forever in the frame and you never need to take it out. You, need, you can change the fluid, you can bleed the brakes, uh, you can trim the hose, even if you need to change the hose for a longer one, you just, you can do it in five minutes or even two with the park tool, uh, routing tool, which if you have cable stops and whatnot, all these guides uh, with mechanical system, mechanical brakes, it's, it's not so easy. So this is another thing, uh, then the last thing I think for me would be wheel changes. Now with rim brakes, uh, if you have multiple pairs, then you run into the problem that probably they will uh, differ in width. In some cases it can be quite significant and you can also have differences in materials. So you can have, for example, a head wheel or an aero coach wheel with an aluminum rim and you know, carbon fairings, and then you can have a full carbon rim. Uh, and if you're constantly changing between these, you need to readjust the brakes all the time, all the time. It's the same thing I've done with my Madon because I had ND 4.5s, later 5.6s, and I had a deep section 7.8s. Uh, it's super annoying, and sometimes, particularly on that bike, I put the bike in a car going for a race, and from the bike rattling inside the car, the brake, and with no wheel in there, the brakes just readjusted themselves. Also, the braking performance really deteriorates uh, with use in wet weather, etc., because of these, you know, wedges that operate the brakes, not traditional brakes. So, in this case, it can be uh, quite annoying. With these brakes, you get one annoyance, and that is that the hub. Uh, spacing and the tolerances stacking up there might not uh, line up the rotor perfectly for each wheel but that can be easily solved by a couple of spacers so you take all your wheels you space them out equally so each one of them runs uh, well in your frame and then you're good to go you just swap them no matter what the material is no matter what the depth is or the width or whatever uh, so I think uh, for me in this point of view is easier. Of course it takes a bit more practice but again like bleeding the brakes it's just an acquired skill. It's not harder it's just different and by this I mean changing the wheel it can be a bit awkward sometimes but if you get a bit of practice on that uh, it's the same. Uh, and the one bonus feature mainly regarding uh, road bikes um, is the use of tubular tires. Now tubular tires again are a bit of a pain in the ass and I know again there will be people who still disagree but uh, the performance of the modern clincher and tubeless tires is just better and more and more manufacturers and even pro riders are starting to embrace that but you still get the restriction uh, of the brake surface and the brake heat and the failures connected to that if you run rim brakes of course if you remove that from the equation if you get disc brakes you get much safer uh, and better performing clincher or tubeless wheels because they don't need to deal with this the brake heat developed in, on the rim brakes and you can make the rims themselves just like the frames 
uh, lighter, tougher, more aerodynamic if you build them uh, from the ground up to be display specific like MV does for example. Okay, so these are my reasons. I think they're pretty legitimate and well just up to date. Uh, a couple of years ago I actually made a video about uh, why I don't want to switch to rim brake, uh, disc brakes, sorry. And at that point in time uh, that was the case, but times are changing so the technology is changing a lot and this is the state uh, that we arrived at today and it's definitely the future so this is what it is all these breaks for me uh, for the next season hopefully my uh, new tantra frame will arrive soon and then I can show you more about it and the whole build of course if you're looking forward to that uh, then don't forget to tune into the ch channel later on and subscribe perhaps hit the notification bell so you don't miss out it's all for today, thanks for watching and see you next time.